Hey everybody, Andy Brady uh, with Upgrading My Print Space Volume 2. Uh, I've been using it for a couple weeks now and it has been fantastic. Uh, everything's working fine. I still have not put my spool holder up here uh, for easier access to get the uh, Prusa spools. Uh, I'll definitely do that because it is much easier. Uh, that's how I'm doing it with my Ender 3 V2. Um, and it's just a whole lot easier than trying to creep up underneath there. Uh, but in the first video I said that I wanted to make enough room to hold filament. Uh, so that in the warmed area, the filament would stay in a warmed area, hopefully keeping it um, more dry. Um, a semi-dry box, really. Um, but I've got all this room here, and I've decided to make a much larger space. I uh, kind of underestimated my total amount of spools. Um, I've got a lot more than I realized. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a very rudimentary box um, again, using things I already have at my disposal, um, I feel like that's an important thing to do whenever you are crafting at home and building something at home, is not going out to Home Depot or Lowe's and spending an extra $300. If you can make a dry area, an area that will keep your filament, your products uh, dry and keep them from going bad, um, use what you have. Even if it ends up not looking quite as pretty as it could if you went and you bought brand new 2x4s. Though, let's be honest, 2x4s at the big box retail stores right now look awful you know nice spirals to them um but so anyway uh first and foremost i'm not going to try to frame it in and make some big sturdy thing because i'm not going to be storing anything on top what i'm really trying to make instead is a tent um so the very first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to attach um some shelf shelf brackets to the wall on both sides um I'm going to attach to the shelf as if it was part of um framing uh, maybe make it a deck or something, um, a two by four, and then I'm going to make it upright. I'm going to plastic the back wall because this is underground and that will leach out uh, moisture. So I'm going to plastic, then I'm going to insulate it, um, and then I'm going to insulate foam board on the top rather than using plywood or anything. Uh, for a couple reasons, it's going to be more fire resistant and it's going to be insulated. Um, I'm actually going to cut an access hole uh, in between the print space and here. That way, uh, if the print space is keeping the whole thing warm enough, the heater will turn off. If the heater is keeping the whole area warm, then whenever we go to use uh, a more delicate filament over here, it'll already be a warmed environment. I'd originally planned to put a heater in here, uh, but that was completely unnecessary. The moment you start running one printer in here, it comes up to temperature very quickly. Uh, there's no breeze, nothing. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in on doing this and uh, after I've done a little bit, I'll catch back in and see where our progress is and see if the idea was successful or if I'm gonna have to scrap it and start all over again. See you in a bit. All right, let's check out on the progress. So uh, I went ahead and used a powder actuated daler uh, because I have one and I was too lazy to hammer drill. This concrete is crazy hard. So powder actuated nailer took the win uh, to put these two brackets in. So I didn't have to have any backside. Remember I said I didn't want to frame this in. I didn't need it to be too durable. The entire top is nothing but foam. Um, and that's because again, I don't plan to stack anything on top whatsoever. If I ever decide to, I could lay some plywood across because it is stable enough. Um, I just used some one by ones to make some uprights. Uh, because as again I said, I am basically turning this into a tent instead of a you know solid box. I want to be able to fit a large stand 1500 watt heater in here, um, set the temperature pretty high, and it will maintain it pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty cheap. Um, something to point out, uh, because people will probably ask, uh, the wood is white colored on the front. Um, and the plastic in the back. This is all crawl space materials. Again, I strongly believe in using what you have uh, when you can. Again, even if it doesn't make it quite as pretty as it could be, um, if it serves a purpose and you save a lot of money and you can do it uh, much cheaper. So most people are not gonna have this kind of plastic uh, tape. It is an insanely sticky tape, uh, kind of similar to like a, a rat trap if you're the kind of person that uses those kinds of. Uh, but I used it on the original box. So anyone who saw my original video will see that the box looks very different. I have whitewashed it a little bit um, and that was the way that I sealed this fire styrofoam up uh, so it should stick permanently and it is waterproof pretty much and it will keep the air from exchanging too much. Um, I wanted to kind of keep it as closed up as I can even though there's going to be gaps in the plexiglass. I wanted to avoid as many gaps as I could to 
kind of make up for those gaps there. Um, same thing here, I'll be taping all corners, I'll be taping all plastic. Uh, you can see I taped the plastic to the wall right here, um, but I did not tape it to the top because if any moisture does come through this concrete, I need it to have a place to go. So I wanted to go up and out um, and into the room rather than in here or rather than being trapped in between the plastic and the concrete and then you know, molding like crazy. One day you come down here and it smells awful. Coming to find out I gotta tear this whole thing out because of one piece of plastic. Um, so, uh, got a couple more steps to go and I'll see where we are next. All right, as you can see, I have boxed it in. I have not taped it up yet, so there are still gaps along the top where it is not sealed. Also, I ran out of foil, so I had to cut another strip and I will need to tape that. I will not do that today because I need to use foil tape for that. Uh, foil tape sticks better from foil to foil, so I'm gonna have to actually find some and use it because I thought I had some here, but I can't find it. Um, but you might be asking, I thought you wanted to make a tent and you wanna be able to put the filament inside of here. So how are you gonna do it? Well, uh, I'm gonna introduce you guys to zip walls. Zip walls are something that are used in uh, dust mitigation, remediation, uh, asbestos, mold, things like that. Um, they essentially allow you to add a zipper door wherever you want. And I'm very familiar with these, I use them quite often. So I will be attaching two of these um, parallel to each other so that I can unzip each side, fold it up, have it wide open, as open as I can get it, uh, access whatever I need, and then quickly zip it back up, just like a tent uh, that you might go camping in. Uh, one other point of note is I did not attach this area here because I wanted to be able to slide this plexiglass and I have it actually go inside of the tented area. Um, not only that, but by doing it this way, any air leakage that I was talking about a minute ago that goes out through that side of the plexiglass, theoretically will just go into this side of the uh, tented in area. Now I cannot staple the bottom of the tent, um, so I don't really have a good solution for that yet. Thinking about it, I'll figure it out. Uh, but if I stapled the bottom, then whenever I went ahead and used the zip walls, I wouldn't be able to open it up. Um, so that's coming next. I'll figure out exactly how I'm gonna do that and um, then I'll catch back in and see what we got. All right, so I got my parallel lines of zippers installed here. Um, so anyone who's never used a zipper wall before, um, if you don't have access to them, they're, they're in your hardware store, you can order them from Amazon. I'll try to put a link to one below. Um, when you unzip it, it's still sealed, obviously. You have to cut and remove this center section. Now this has been attached by adhesive and that adhesive is extremely strong. Um, I did something that I don't typically have the luxury of doing and I put staples in the top, that way I could line them up a little bit straighter uh, because my attempt is to use this for a very long time, whereas typically something like this is actually used short term during a remediation project. Um, if you don't find these in your hardware store, you might find tent zippers, which are the exact same thing, but they're made to go on a tarp. I'm sorry, tarp zippers. They're made to go on a tarp. Uh, they are a little bit more durable, um, but they're not quite as good at sealing out uh, dust and stuff. So uh, just kind of depending on what you have available, uh, not too expensive. I think it's $10 for a pair of two of these. Um, so let's see what happens next. All right, I got my strip cut out. I wanted to point something out. You don't just do one slice down the middle. Uh, Zippo usually comes with something that has uh, hooks with two uh, slicers on it. I lost mine somehow, um, but I just took a razor blade down one side and then took it down the other side. The reason that you wanna take a chunk out is you don't want these zippers getting caught on things, uh, similar to how it'll get caught on a uh, very light jacket that will fall in between the zippers and get caught. So you actually remove a section of it. That way you've got a gap uh, and there's no chance of the zippers getting caught. Uh, but now that I unzip both sides, I can literally just wrap it up and over and it will be completely out of the way. And of course, doing it one-handed is not quite the same. Um, I plan to probably put a little weight or something on there so that whenever I flip it up there, it actually stays. It never has a chance of actually falling down. Uh, but now what I've got is this very wide open space. Uh, like I said, I still need to seal over here. Still got some tape work to be done. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you guys with those details. I'll just show you the final product here in just a little bit. All right, everybody, here's the final product. Still a mess up here. Haven't had a chance to clean out the workshop yet from these projects, uh, but this took me less than a couple hours to make. Of course, I already had these building materials, but if you had to go out and buy these building materials, it'd be pretty inexpensive. Um, these, um, these shelves came from uh, Big Lots. They're cheap. 
they're not very good actually but they are going to serve the purpose pretty well i'm probably going to go get two more um, i ended up putting tie wraps on them that really strengthened them up the ones in front or the one in front uh, is on wheels so i can move it back and forth to get to my other ones uh, which is why i'd really like to end up with at least one more uh, because there's enough room here for another one pretty easily um, i'm going to have a heater in this area over here that's going to keep this area warm as you can see i did put a cutout in between like I said, I want to be able to, um, you know, share the heat between the two. Um, if I can have the heat from this area heating up this area, maybe the heater will run less often, save me energy while I'm already using heat. Um, or if these devices are off, which is very rare, and the heater in here has to cut on, well, it will uh, keep that area just a little bit warmer. That way, whenever it's time to start printing, it's already a warm environment, doesn't have the breeze or anything, and, um, you know, it'll just be a better cleaner printing environment. I'm going to work on uh, testing the humidity in here, the temperature in here, and to see how it changes. Um, I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, that instead of putting filament in a uh, box full of desiccant or to put it in a dry box or to put it in an oven overnight, that if I could simply leave it in a room that was um, warm enough uh, without getting crazy, that it would keep the filament dry naturally. Um, probably without the need for a bunch of desiccant packets. Um, if you're curious about dry boxes, how they work, uh, check out my other video where I explain how raising temperature lowers humidity even though it doesn't actually remove moisture, uh, which is kind of a concept and uh, kind of puts the hole in the idea of buying $100 filament dryers. Um, I'm also gonna run some experiments to see what happens if I run filament from in here through that hole all the way across and all the way down here to my Prusa. Uh, because I've done some pretty crazy experiments with my Ender 3 V2. Um, I've got a video where I've done all the, the upgrades on this because it's got a ton of upgrades where I actually hung filament way over here, ran it up over some nails along the rafters, back down through uh, the hole and into this and it fed just fine, no problem, even though it was dragging across wood, concrete, um, and nails the entire way and it still fed just fine still printed just fine so um, I am gonna run the experiment just for the fun of it um, it would be kind of neat if I could just grab a piece slide it over there and have it feed down through a bunch of eyelets or something and never actually have to remove anything from in here uh, but that's a story for another day when I'm done I'll just pull it down and just like closing up your tent at night ready to go to bed that's it and now I have a non-airtight but relatively well-sealed environment that is insulated with fire-resistant insulation. Um, and just like I talked about putting in here, I am going to have some of the automatic fire extinguishers up in here. So if there ever was a flame, it should put the fire out long before there was ever an issue. Um, and we'll check in on that later. Uh, again, my name is Andy Brady, and uh, these are 3D printing uh, tips, tricks, experience, pretty much anything that uh, comes up. Hopefully you find this entertaining. Um, if you do, please like and subscribe. Um, also, there will be links to some of these products, not many, but some of these products, some of these things uh, in the description. If they are a link to Amazon, yes, I do make a tiny commission on that. Uh, but as I say in all these videos, I'm not going to recommend something that I won't use myself, that I'm not currently using myself, or, or not something that I've experienced myself and want to have. Uh, so you should be able to look at anything on that video or on that description and know that uh, if you get it, it's the right thing. Um, if you got any comments, questions, concerns, uh, if you think I did it completely wrong and I'm an idiot, Comment it. Let me know. If you think there's something I could do very small that would make a major improvement, uh, let me know. I'm always looking to see how we can make this just a little bit better of an experience um, now that I've moved my print shop into an unconditioned workshop. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.